Lisa? Yes. Yeah. Okay, um, thank you very much for giving me the opportunity to present this work here. So as already mentioned, I will talk about, uh, about a refined large deviation principle for branching Brownian motion when we condition it to have a low maximum. So I will start, uh, so, so the first thing I should say is that um, I will explain all the words in the title um, in this talk. And this is all based on joint work uh, with John Jabai, who is a PhD student at the University of Bonn that I'm jointly uh, supervising with Anton Bouvier. And I should also say that actually she prepared all these slides, which I found so nice that I just used them. Um, so to the structure um, of this talk, so I will start by explaining what branching Brownian motion is, even though it already appeared in Anton's talk, um, I will recall it for completeness. Um, and then I will explain to you um, what we mean by having a low maximum. And then I will explain what our results are uh, in terms of this refined large deviation principle. So with the branching Brownian motion, um, we just look at the standard binary branching Brownian motion. So what we do is we, we start with a standard Brownian motion at time zero from the origin and we let it run for an exponential one time until it splits into two particles. And then the new particles follow independent Brownian, Brownian motions and uh, they branch again according to the same law. So if we look at the process at the time t, um, we see a random number uh, n of t particles and the expected number of particles that we observe is exactly e to the t. Um, in this talk, we will denote the particle positions by capital X k of t, and we will denote by x max of t the maximal, uh, the location of the maximal particle at time t. Um, it is known from, um, from work by Bramson that the order of the maximum, if we have, if we put no conditioning, is given by square root two t minus three over two square root two log t plus, a, plus an order one correction term that could also be described um, more precisely, but this will not be the focus of this talk. Uh, so for us, the main, the main thing is that typically if we observe branching Brownian motion, uh, the maximal particle will be a tight square root two t. And what we want to do now is we want to ask um, we want to look at branching ground emotion, but we want to condition it to have a much lower maximum. So we want to look at the probability that the maximal position is below square to alpha t, where alpha is smaller than one. Um, this has first been studied in the paper by Derrida and Xi, um, and they showed a large deviation principle, namely that the logarithm of this probability um, behaves like a certain function depending on alpha times t. Um, and this function has two different parts. So if alpha is not, not too small, not too negative, right? So it's somewhere between one and minus rho, where this minus rho is square root two minus one, um, then this probability roughly looks like e to the t times two rho times one minus alpha. And if alpha is very negative, then it's one plus alpha squared. And I will say, I will say a few more words about how, where this comes from in a second. So where does this come from? So we want to, um, so we want to look at this branching ground motion and we want it to have a low maximum. Right, so what we can do is we know that at the very beginning, what we see is just the usual Brownian motion. And the key quantities we can look at here are the first branching time and the first branching position. Because as an Anton, as an Anton's talk, what, will, what is going to happen is that actually 
this first branching time will happen rather late, which will reduce the number of particles that we observe in the system. And what, what we want to study is somehow the influence really of this, of having, of having this, let's say, atypical with branching time and branching location, right? So how can we, how can we use this? So basically we can we can use the recursive equation so we can look at this y which is the time which is the location of the first uh, at the first branching point and we know that at this point we have just observe a gaussian distribution so we pay e to the minus tau to not branch until time tau and then the position is just a gaussian with variance tau and now if we want if we want to have um, now, if you want to have it, the maximum to be lower than square root two alpha t, then the two BBMs here, the red one and the yellow one, starting at this first branching location, they need to stay at time t below the square root two alpha t. And they are independent. And then we need to integrate over all possible branching locations and all possible branching times. So this gives us this gives us a kind of recursive equation that allows us in principle to, to that will allow us to compute, to, to handle this probability that the maximum is low. Right? And of course, there's also an additional term, right? Because it could be that we never branch and then we, we don't have this term, um, we don't have this term for the red and the yellow branching around the motion. Um, so then we have this extra factor, which is e to the minus t for not branching for times t, and then having an end location between minus infinity and square root two alpha t. Okay, so this is this is in some sense very familiar to the way how you get the connection of the maximum to the SKPP equation. It just formulated a little bit. Uh, it just formulated this way for our purpose. And if you look at this, uh, it, it, at this result of the reader and she, they actually observed that if you condition, uh, so if you look at branching Brownian motion having this low maximum, then there is a typical, uh, there's a typical time at which this first branching happens, and there's a typical location where this first branch is. So this time where you first branch is um, one minus alpha over square root two, minimum one times t, plus a correction term a smaller order correction term. And here is actually also where the difference in the results comes from. So, so if this minimum is this minimum there is attained as is just one, it just means that we don't branch essentially for the whole period of time that we are observing. Whereas when the first when this one minus alpha over square root two wins, then it means that there actually is a time before the final time that we observe where we branch and where for a certain period of time we observe a normal branching Brownian branch motion. And this uh, and the location where this first branching happens is given by square root 2 alpha t minus square root 2 times t minus cos 0 plus a correction term. And this essentially means that where do we go? We go exactly with this with this first bit of, of Brownian motion, we exactly go to the location such that the children that are born at this time, they don't have to pay much to have a low max to, to achieve this constraint on the maximum, right? Because the children born at this time, tau zero, they are still alive for time t minus tau zero and square root two times t minus tau zero is exactly the first order of the maximum of a branching bond emotion running for time t minus tau zero. Okay. And, and what is, what is true, I mean, what will be also crucial for what we then do is that we, we really have an interplay here between three factors. So we, we, we want the, the part, the, particle with whom we start to branch at a late time tau. We want it to go to a low location y so that the children there don't have that much work to do. 
And of course, we also want that the children that are born at this first branch in time also create BBMs with a low maximum. And depending on where this first branching would happen, there is a constraint that the red and the yellow BBMs will need to be low or can be typical. And our goal now will be to understand what exactly um, the influence is of the first branching time and the first branching location. Right. So we want to look at the probability that the branching boundary motion has a low maximum, but we also want to take into want to put constraints on where the first branching time and the first branching location uh, are allowed to happen. And we would like to understand the optimal strategy of the branching boundary motion to achieve this, this constraint event. Right, so um, the TA will always denote the constraint on the first branching time and the LB will always denote the constraint on the branching location. And so what we first would like to understand is what if we don't allow this first branch, what happens if we don't allow this first branching time to be really late? So what if we tell our branching branch emotion, no, 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 you need to branch the first time before time gamma t for some gamma between zero and one. Right? So um, right, so so, so the reader she result would just say, okay, let, let gamma be equal to one and let, let the BBM do what is optimal. But what we would really like to do is we would actually like to consider the case where there is a constraint, an additional constraint. So where we choose this gamma to be smaller than the optimal choice than this tau zero that I just mentioned. Um, so that there is an additional constraint on the first branch. Yeah. Right. Of course, we could also consider the case when the first branching time is allowed to be later, but then we could just choose the optimal value for zero because it is part of, of the interval we look at. Um, right. Um, and of course, we could also, in that case, right, it, it's more interesting to just say, okay, Branching early then does not give you a constraint. So what if we force you to branch very late? So between some kind gamma T and T. So in this uh, shaded gray area, can we then say something, something about uh, about the optimal branching strategy? Right. So then we would need to look at this blue path instead of the optimal red path, and we would need to see which of the of these. Uh, in the bluish part, uh, path are actually the best one. Um, and of course, we also would like to understand um, the, the influence of the branching location, right? So as I said in this Derrida, in this Derrida she results, it's always that the, the BBMs that are born at the first branching time, they do not really need to fulfill any constraints, um, they can essentially behave like normal big branching boundary motion. So what we also would like to understand is what if we forbid this in the sense that we say, okay, now we force you to branch at the first time at certain, in a certain time interval around gamma t, but we also ask you to branch within, within a certain area, right? So, um, right, so we look at, right, so we, we look at this time gamma t, and we also tell this bunch of animation, you know, you have to branch, uh, you have to branch very low, or maybe not so low, right, it depends on the choice of this beta, um, what is then the optimal strategy? Um, okay.
right? And of course, we could also ask the inverse question, right? Uh, right? So we cannot ask it to branch very low, but we could ask it to branch very high, which obviously is very bad because if we have asked it to branch very high for the very first time, um, the particles will need to go down a lot at the very beginning. And then there's, an inter there's somehow this intermediate range that we would like to understand, right? Where you, where you, const where you constrain, uh, so where the constraint is not super high, but a little bit higher than what you would normally do. And so we also would like to understand that influence. And before I come to writing down the results, um, which, which because there are going to be lots of cases look slightly ugly, let me, let me come back to the recursion that I explained earlier. So this is the recursion that I explained at the beginning of my talk. And now essentially what we would like to do is we would like to put the constraints that we are considering additionally um, there is restrictions on the integrals um, in the recursive, for recursive formula. So instead of integrating over the time zero t, we only integrate over the allowed range um, for our first branching time. And for the branching location, we only integrate over the um, allowed range for the first branching location. Right, and then, and then we, want to, we want to really understand where, where is this, uh, Where's this? Where's from where comes the contribution to this integral, right? And um, what what somehow crucial is that, of course, this 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 squared probability in the recursion. So if we if we force it, uh, so the square part in this recursion somehow, right? This we can understand again as an expression that is just the probability that. Um, that the maximum of a BBM is smaller than a certain value, right? And then it takes exactly the form as in the Sterida Sheep um, paper, right? It takes exactly the form of the probability we started off in a sense, but these ones that are in this, this that are now in this recursive formula, they are not constrained, right? For these probabilities, we can, we can use the recursion for these probabilities, we can use the result of the reader and she and plug it somehow into this recursive formula and then work out the optimizers um, given our constraints. Okay. And, and if you do this, you get lots of nice expressions that you can interpret well. Um, so if you if you asked, so if you look at the probability that the maximum is below square root two alpha t and the first branching time is within zero and gamma t, um, then, um, then you get actually, you have, you have a lot of cases that you need to distinguish, which comes from the fact that you already have two cases in the Sterida Shi results. And then you have additional cases depending on whether the attached, what, what the strategy is for the, let's say the red and the um, yellow BBM that I had earlier in the picture. But instead of um, saying too much about these formulas, let me try to explain things in pictures. Um, right. So, um, right, so we saw that the optimal choices in, for the, in, for just looking at branching Brownian motion to have a low maximum where this one minus alpha over square root two minimum one times T. And for the location, it was square root two alpha T minus square root two T minus two. And now, um, right. And so, and, and of course, so if the alpha was very negative and we never branched, then this location was just square root two alpha T because you go as high as you want. And in the other case, if you plug it in, you get minus rho times one minus alpha t. So, so now we have to distinguish all these, all these nice cases, right? Um, and essentially what we see is, so, so here are just some plots for different values of alpha. 
that are in all the different ranges. Um, right, so, so the top row somehow gives you the weight function and the optimal choices are in the, sec are in the second column, which, um, which let me uh, maybe comment on now. So, um, so of course, if the gamma goes above one minus alpha over square root of two, we can just always take the optimal choice of the read and chi, that's the green line. Um, and then, then before that, right, before is the first branching time to be very, very, very low, right? So what, um, um, so what we are going, to, so what we are going, so, so what we are kind of going to do is we, for if, um, right? So, so what we need to do if gamma is, if gamma is very small, the, the branching boundary motion wants to go very low at the very beginning because we force it to branch very wow. early. So if we force it to branch very early, it wants to have lots of particles. I mean, we force it to have more particles than it wants to have. And all of these particles need to pay a price to go low. And so the best strategy would be to go really low at the very beginning so that you don't really have to pay this price, right? Um, but of course, if the gamma is really, really small, maybe you also don't want to go too small because you pay, because if, if you have very little time to go very, very low, somehow that's too expensive. So, so what you really get in terms of this curve is somehow a trade-off between the price of paying within, with the two newborn BBMs and the price that you have initially to go down. Um, and this is somehow what you see in this, in the, in the bottom picture in the, in the first uh, column is, is really this. So if for a certain time, right, you go, you don't go as low as you would need to go to not pay for the newborn, for the, for the, for the children born at the first branching time, you don't go so low that you don't pay anything for them, but you choose this intermediate range. But as soon as you reach a certain critical point, um, then somehow it's better to, it's, you, you, are, you are, have reached the point where you've gone so low, where you were already allowed to go so low, that you don't pay for the for the attached BBM somehow, and then you can then if you increase gamma, you can go a little bit up again because the 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 the, the attached BBMs do not need to uh, can you know have then slightly less time if they are born later. They have less time to actually create a high maximum, and the constraint is less. Right. So this is the orange part. Um, and in the different, in the other two alpha ranges, it's a bit similar. So there's always the case where, um, right, um, that you see here, right? So, so you really see this, this interesting interplay that at the very beginning, there's this optimal choice that you need to do. You reach this point where you can go, the optimal thing to do is you go so low that you don't pay for your kids. And if you do that, then you do this until you reach the overall optimal state. And then you just do the optimal thing if it's allowed. Um, um, of course, you could also say that you branch late. So if the gamma, so if you only are allowed to branch after time gamma t, um, then, um, then, then things are kind of easier, right? Because as you could have guessed, well, your first branching location is just going to be chosen such that you don't pay for your kids. So you go to this square root two alpha t minus square root two one minus gamma t. Um, and you and because you, you say you want to branch late and you kind of believe that your system is monotone, you branch as soon as you are allowed to branch. You branch and at this point you are at, at the location so that you don't pay for your so this is this this tau gamma here. It just as soon as you're allowed to branch, you branch, and the y of gamma it just says, okay, you branch at the location where you don't pay for your kids to have a loan. Um, wow. 
right? And of course, okay. Um, and so now what, what's really interesting is that what happens if you somehow forbid, forbid to branch at your favorite branching location? So now we want to say, well, you know, we fix essentially the time where your first branching happens for convenience, right, to, to formulate everything nicely. And we say, well, now we force you to branch the first time between minus infinity and square root two alpha t minus square root two beta t minus four. And we want to know, well, what is your favorite? Um, what is your favorite? What is your favorite branching position then? Um, because the, the time now is fixed. And as it turns out there, so if the beta, um, so if beta is small, you essentially, um, you essentially choose this location by a feature just as some little o of t. So you don't really go anywhere. You just, um, you just, you know, you just, yeah. You just don't move. But as soon as the, as the beta gets larger, um, you, the first branching location is going to be again of a very similar form. So it's the square root two alpha t minus square root two beta times one minus gamma t. Right. Um, so it's, it's, it's again, it's again somehow this um, location, right? So it's, it's again, so somehow you say, okay, you, you branch, but you have to do it when you're, but you have to do it low. So you do it somehow as little low as you can, which is good for your strategy. Um, um, and then of course you can also say, okay, what happens if, if your first branching location is really high? So of course, if the branching location is high, um, but the thing now is, okay, right? You've, and you fix the time gamma. So now this looks, this might, this might look a bit frightening, but the thing just is that, um, well, you have already from the first thing I explained where you, where you essentially look at the optimal first branching time, you already have this different behavior on, on, on what your optimal strategy is. And now, you have to essentially subdivide into all the cases because you force, because essentially you force, um, you force now the first, yeah. So you now force the first branching location to be higher than what it wants to be. And so there's going to be a part, um, which you see at the button, let me just explain the button of the slide. So if the gamma is small, then there is a, range of features where you go to the square root two alpha t minus square root two beta one minus gamma t right which is very but which is very much the same as we saw on the other slide so um we try to branch as low as we can um but there actually is a range when um beta is between this alpha over one plus gamma times one where we don't do this but we get something um but, but we get a different optimizer, which is a linear, which is uh, given by this two square root two alpha gamma over one plus gamma times t, um, which, which comes from the fact that, um, yeah, which comes from, which just comes from the fact that the gamma is small, right? It wasn't our optimal, somehow our optimal strategy wasn't uh, to go so far down that you don't pay for your kids, but it was something intermediate. And this intermediate effect of going a little bit down and branching now reappears here. Well, yeah, sorry, Ben, you, you, your time is yeah. over. You can wrap up. What? No, your time is over, so you please. Um, yes. Yeah. yes. Sorry. Yeah, that's fine. So, so let me just so let me just quickly summarize. So essentially, um, what we try to really understand is the effect uh, constraints on the branching look first branching time and first branching location um, have on the maximum of of CBM. 
and we wanted to really understand what what are the optimal strategies behind this. So, okay. I will I will stop there. Okay, thank you very much for a very nice talk. Thanks, the speaker. Is there uh, any question or comment? I have a question. Uh, may I? Uh, thanks, thanks, Lisa, for your talk. I, I guess you are also interested in, in other statistics mm -hmm. uh, of the process condition around this event. Uh, can you comment on that? Um, what do you mean with other statistics? Like, let's say, like the, how, how the process looks like from the maximum. Uh, I, I mean, like, like today we know like BBM with uh, like a lot of detail. And uh, so, if it, is it possible to, to, to have information of the process condition on this event with the same detail? Or uh, I guess it's difficult, but so, at some so point. Yeah. So, so if you look at the probability that the maximum of BBM is smaller than square root 2 alpha t, um, then there is a rather recent paper by Chin Chin Chen, Hui He, and uh, Bastian Malon, where they um, describe um, the, the extremal process um, when you condition BBM to have this maximum. So what you essentially see, um, what you essentially see is that from, so okay, um, if the, you go to this first branch in time implication, and from there you have two PBMs that, it, that essentially don't have a constraint. So what you see then is somehow this PBM spell, which I will read and yellow in my case. Um, they are both, they both are going to contribute like something that looks like the extremal process of normal branching Brownian motion. They are superimposed on each other, and then they are conditioned to not to not have an atom uh, to not have an atom that is above a certain level. Um, and if you put these other additional constraints, it's very likely that you see something similar. Um, but one needs to be slightly careful because if you put these extra constraints, um, if you put these extra constraints depending on when you allow your BBM to branch. Um, the two kids might not want to might not immediately want to look like normal BBMs, but whether they are going to look like BBMs that are constrained to have a low maximum themselves, right? So um, then you have to kind of iterate this until you reach the point that is now the the time point somehow where your children start looking like normal BBMs, and you don't see the difference and you, you stop seeing the constraint. And then from this point on, one should be able to somehow see um, superimposed extremal processes of BBM that are constrained to just not have an atom um, that's, that's higher than some random value. Thank you. Are there uh, any questions or comments? So let me just make a comment, Elisa. I am surprised about the number of phases that you have here, <laughs> phase transition with these two parameters. And uh, it's, it's hard to follow each of them. But uh, now I was thinking maybe an obvious question is, uh, what happens if you um, condition to have a higher uh, maximum than the usual one? No, do you have any, any, why do you are motivated more for this, do this uh, low maximum than uh, yeah. your maximum? Well, okay, so, okay, so this, so this, uh, in some sense, okay, so you can also study a condition to have a low, a high maximum, but in a sense, in a sense, the picture is less, in my opinion, the picture is slightly less rich, because here, what one really tries to understand is, is essentially the suppression of branching at the very beginning. Because if you condition something to have a low maximum, everything happens at the beginning and you have to really, um, you have to kind of really understand um, how the suppression of branching is happening, right? So when, is, when can you start branching and how many particles would you expect and what's the best thing to do? If you just want to have 
a high particle, you just have to essentially choose one Brownian motion to go that high. That huh. becomes your spine. And then from the spine on, I mean, all the particles that come from off from there, they don't have a constraint. Because somehow to have a high maximum, you just need one particle to be high. Whereas huh. if you want to have a low maximum, all particles need to be low. Ah, yes. Um, yes. OK. OK, thank you. Any other question? Okay, let's thanks again, Lisa. Thank you very much.